Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in this episode, we have the Claw. We have the advanced grabbing unit that will allow us to do wonderful things with asteroids. But, but before we get to that, we need a lot of other things to, uh, to get things going. We need a new launcher, and we unlocked the skipper engine and 2.5 meter parts, so we should try and build something with those. And we also need to test out the claw on things. But what can we test out on? Well, let's go to the tracking station. Now, we could just throw something into orbit and uh, just claw that. But, but we don't need to, you see. We have some debris. We have some debris from our previous missions. And in fact, we have some debris in some very interesting orbits, like this one. That looks like a pretty good orbit to uh, mess around with. And we also have this... Ooh! We even have a Mooner 1 debris that reached escape velocity and is now in uh, in uh, uh, Kerbal-centric orbit. So that's interesting. So we've got that. And we also have a little bit of debris. Well, that, that one's just on the moon, isn't it? So, oh, uh, B1 debris, where is that? Oh, that's just sitting... You know what, uh, let's recover that one anyway. That's, that's probably just sitting down there. Okay. So, uh, the one we want to target then is this Mooner 3 debris. So let's get, let's clean that up and bring it back down to Kerbin, let's say. So we're doing the opposite of what we would want to do with an asteroid. We're actually bringing this back down to Kerbin. Okay. Um, so that is a plan. Now, the asteroid that we were mainly concerned about for our, uh, first mission is going to arrive in five days so we've got plenty of time to practice but let's start tracking more asteroids uh, this one is a class D we should definitely track that when is it coming in it it doesn't huh okay well fine guys it doesn't like us very much all right fine it's not gonna come in this one is a class B, a pretty weak, but maybe it'd be interesting to mess around with. Let's just let's just go with it. Track it. Okay, this one comes in and it looks like it'll hit us eventually. So that that's a good one. Good one uh, being, you know, based on the fact that we want to track it. Uh class C, class D. Have we got Yeah, this one is tracked and it's coming in in 10 days. When is the class E coming in? 23 days. We'll need a pretty big thing to push that around. So that's got to be an issue. Uh, so when we're t testing for debris, we have to keep in mind the fact that the actual asteroid, uh, uh, this one in particular, will be much bigger. It's a class size C. It's a 7 to 10 meter range in radius. And uh, it's quite massive. So it'll be hard to push that around compared to our debris. Now, this is a class A. If we really wanted to do something funny with something, this tiny one would be the one to go with. L let's see. Let's track that too. That'll be in 26 days. By that time we should have a lot of experience though. I'm gonna leave these off. Uh, okay, well, the huge one should be tracked. Okay. 45 days on that. So we've got some time to work with here. But uh, we know our mission. We want to build a launcher and a system that can track this debris. Uh, that, no, not track the debris. Bring the debris back down. Okay, so let's go to the VAB. Okay, so for the claw, as I had said before, we, we really want this lander can. This is too heavy. And so we're going to put the claw on top of this. Like so. Not the most uh, most beautiful design ever, but it'll do. And we're going to be wanting to bring this back down. Uh, this this could probably well it'll just be this in the claw, I think. So like that. How heavy is the claw? Oh, it's tiny. It's not even a significant mass. Oh, but the by putting the parachutes here, we'll probably be upside down when when we. Hmm, that is a thing, huh? Let's take a look at the claw. Uh, no, that's not... I don't know what toggle flag... Oh, toggle flag will be the image on the side, right? We've still got the 
default Kerbal flag right now. Okay, so yeah, this is a little bit uh, tricky because the, well, the crew will have to just know that they're going to be upside down on landing, okay? Uh, they'll, maybe they'll have seats, alternate jump seats to figure that out, I don't know, whatever. Um, we'll just have to deal. Because I want to save mass as much as possible. So this part will re-enter. Well, that's not right, right? I mean, this thing is going to be cleaning up debris. Maybe we shouldn't leave so much debris. <laughs> Uh, it, it, why should it create debris if it's going to be cleaning up debris? That's, that's the question. I guess this makes sense. How about we uh, get some round of fire? It, it seems like this will be a thing to have RCS on. Yeah, that's not too bad, is it? And let's put RCS. Uh, not that much RCS. And let's go angle snap. Why is this showing red? Huh. Come on. Huh. We're there. Not giving me uh, any chance to put uh, those on. Now, how much does this weigh? Just taking a quick tally. This, this top portion is probably around... Uh, 1.2 tons, uh, maybe 1.3, let's say. And then the RCS tanks combined, 0.55, 5 times 8. Oh, let's call it round about, well, that's 2, 2.5. That's pretty heavy, huh? But that's that's good. Uh, so let's, let's call it uh, 3... Three units. Uh, three tons. No, not three tons. 3.5 tons. No, more than that. My math processor isn't working right now. Uh, probably, let's just uh, call it around four tons. Just for uh, buffer sake. So we'll bring that back down. So that'll be our return thing. And now, something to get us to our debris. And perhaps push it around a bit. I don't like the look of this, but we can fix that with some portions off to the side. Wish I had stretchy tanks, really. Ooh, that looks horrible. Maybe I should just rely with on a lot of RCS, huh? At least it'll make it look better. I mean, I do like the look of it. I mean, especially if we had, we really went all the way and go like that. Just in terms of looks, that looks pretty nifty. Uh, let's say we do something sensible, shall we? Uh, we don't need more thrusters. What can we put on the side? There doesn't seem to be much, is there? These don't really fit on the side, I don't think. Or maybe I could just attach them. No, they don't have a, they don't have an attach point. Well, okay, okay. Let's let's just. Maybe we should just go with a 2.5 meter part at this point. How heavy is this? Uh, it's a little bit. Well, it could work. Its thrust weight ratio would be low. It'd be about 0.5, let's say. But there's no reason we need anything more than that. Okay, well, uh, it looks better than the alternative. Let's say we go with this. Oh, 
Wow, that doesn't look great. I'm not using the struts for support. I'm using the struts to make it look decent, okay? Just for you to know. Just want to smooth out my lines here. Okay. Can't really be too picky about these things. So let's say this is 4 and then this is uh, 5. Yeah, just about 9 tons here. Okay. Then we're gonna add another. How much was the decoupler? 0.4. God, those things are heavy. Okay, so let's say 20 tons. I'm adding buffer as I go. Um, this might not work, but we've got parachutes. Okay, I think this would barely lift off. Let's get a reaction wheel in there somewhere. Probably the higher the better. I do not know if I have enough de delta V on this. I guess I should calculate such things. Since I'm supposedly good at, well not good at, uh, halfway decent at this Kerbal stuff. So, I'm going to assume that this top, uh, stay, these top test stages have about, ooh, let's just call it 22 since that's like that. Let's say 23 for, for good measure. And then this is 36, 59 altogether, 63, wow that's really tight. Let's put some boosters on this maybe. Anyway, let me just calculate for this uh, for this first stage how much how much delta V it actually has. So 63, and then it's going to have 32 worth of fuel. So that is 2000, 2087. And then this stage, let's say this was 10, and. Oh, that's good enough actually. Uh, th th I said this is 22 so let's just keep it 22 and in that case I'm gonna use the vacuum ISP for this one. 1729 so not quite enough to get us into orbit. It'll be just a little bit short. So yeah I think this calls for some boosters. Now do we use these? These new guys? No those look horrible. This don't look right. Um, next to this thing, of course. Let's have some boosters standing off like this. I really don't like solid rocket boosters, though. They're not worthwhile in this game. We've got fuel lines now, so I could just use liquid boosters on the side and feed the fuel into the center. Yeah, maybe that would be better. Let's do things sort of properly. You know what? Actually, uh, let me see if this can get off the ground as is. This is going to be a very tricky test. Oh, I know what I can do. I'm going to put these as optional mini boosters here. I'm gonna action group them to action group one. Ooh, that's something I forgot. I need solar panels, don't I? Where am I gonna put those? Uh, let's move these up, up, up. Oh no, uh, the center mass is down anyway, so let's move them down. We've got the extendo solar panels, so let's put uh, set here going to otherwise put them like that okay let's 
So toggle these panels. Anything else I forgot? I guess some battery power is called for. Um, not really any good bat. Oh, lights! Haha, <laughs> I promised lights, didn't I? Okay, uh, well, that's why I need all the battery. So, where can I put the batteries? Well, this is gonna be hanging out with us for a while until the orbit, so I can put the batteries on here yeah and the lights let's just go with two no actually four is fine four will give a nice coverage oh and maybe I'll do two of each type that's better which way is it this way Okay, and then two of the other type too. Fine. I think uh, we will color code this red. Just straight up red. And turn the lights on. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that business dealt with. Uh, well, yeah, okay. Um, that's interesting. Let's get some science on here, just in case we don't get any other benefit from this. Um, well, we don't have that much science. I guess we can uh, put the first barometer tests. We didn't haven't gotten those yet. Yeah, let's just do the barometer tests on the way up. So I'm going to try this out without boosters, but I'm not too sure if this is good enough. So this is 81, the first asteroid defense attempt test mission. I think this is really underpowered. All right, let's see, let's just try it out. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad. SAS on, throw us up. Jeb is, of course, our test pilot for this sort of thing, and our launch clamps are all in the wrong place. That would be bad. Let's just get this all neat and tidy here. All right, let's go. Okay, so we didn't need those. I put enough margin so that this works out. Alright, so we can just dump those little radials. Alright, uh, but uh, there's still a matter of actually getting into orbit here. And I don't know if we... Uh, I want to get into orbit on just these two stages. And that's the question I'm, I'm facing here. Ooh, we have to keep in mind where the heck. Uh, in uh, our debris should be. Uh, I want us. I want to see debris here. Oh, we got seven debris. Yeah. Oh, uh, probably the launch clamps. Um. Yeah. At least our debris is in uh, equatorial orbit. We know that because that's how I launched every mission so far. So the inclination is not a big deal.
I'm still too low. Hmm. I think I'm. I was trying for a profile that I on a different rocket. Uh, trouble with doing too many things sometimes. Oh well. So yeah, I think we need boosters on this thing. I didn't want to use this engine for this part, but I guess we're gonna need to. Okay, I think we're gonna go with this for now. Uh, the periapsis isn't uh, out of the atmosphere yet, but I need to plot for some sort of intercept. Keep in mind, we need to intercept our target before it reaches its periapsis, because if this is an asteroid, that would be too late. Um, so let's see what we can do here. Nothing about this is gonna be ideal. can hardly expect that uh, you'll get an ideal intercept when you're on an emergency mission. Maybe I, I need to raise my periapsis a little bit. I need to Let's try and make a tangency of some kind, I think. Okay, that'll do. We're carrying a lot of RCS. Let me let me just see how much delta V we'll get. Yeah, we'll get more delta V once we decouple this stage anyway. Of course, at that point we won't have lights or battery or reaction wheels. So maybe that's a bad thing. I'm not entirely satisfied with this design so far, but this is just a first attempt here. Yeah, I know about the scroll wheel, I just find it very awkward. Especially when I've got all these issues going on. Okay, okay, now we've got it. Mm, 36 seconds, great. Okay, 38 kilometers is not great, but perhaps we can do it and get a little bit closer. Let's say we do uh, the equivalent of a mid-course uh, adjustment. Let's just start burning right now. Let's try and do this with some precision here. And I can dump this right now. I need to see what's actually going on. Okay, that's as close as that gets. Now, what we probably should do is make an adjustment at the descending node to fix everything else. So it's a descending node, so we want to lift it up. I guess I'll have to do with 1.5 kilometers here. I, I can be satisfied with that at this point, though it is a very small target, remember. I don't even know what kind of debris it is. I haven't uh, checked out. This is an inclination change. I should be going around this way. There we go. All right. Eight minutes. Oh, I forgot to do the barometer stuff. I guess I'll have to do it on the way down, huh? Okay. Probably should have done this with... with uh, RCS. Really? We're not going to get better than 5? Uh, I should have kept the maneuver node. Decided to mess with me because I dropped it. 
Oh well. Well, ascending node and descending node are not even numbers. So, no point uh, making that sort of adjustment, I guess. Okay, well, here we definitely need the scroll, find an adjustment scroll wheel, right? Okay. And this time I will use RCS because I can not see how I'm not gonna do such a precision burn without it. 0 0.2 kilometers. Yep, that's the burn I want. Though I bet if I just turn around, it's going to mess that. Let's see. Let's see if uh, when I turn, no, no, it's fine. Okay, I tried to do a little dip there. Okay. RCS on. Okay, excellent. Very, very good. I guess now it's just time to get there, right? Okay, we've got a lot of relative velocity to burn off with the target. And I think two minutes is not uh, an unreasonable amount of time to take for that. Uh, that's towards the target. Oh, well, that's good at least. I like that our retrograde vector is directly... Well, that might shift as we come in. How fast can we do this? Pretty fast. Let me wait a little bit longer. Well, all we gotta do is burn this off. Let's see, where is it? I just saw it. Okay, 2.2 .2 kilometers. Well, that's what you get if you've got that much to burn off. Okay, let's try and point towards... Now you see why we needed all this fuel, by the way. I bet you were wondering. Now we're getting pretty close to our the periapsis, the curve in periapsis that I wanted to avoid, so this is not necessarily the most brilliant of tests so far. Our spotlights are actually illuminating it red right now. Gonna activate the claw right now. Hello, claw. Claw. Arm. Very good. The wondrous claw. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this, folks. And not least of which, we can avoid the Kessler syndrome. We can clear up our space debris. I don't know if we're going to be able to grab it. Let's see. How fast can we go and to grab something? Is this too fast? I don't know. I don't know anything about clawing things yet. We are going to find out right here. Doesn't seem like I'm coming in at the right place for clawing something. Okay, well, hold on. Okay, so how do I claw things? I think we've discovered a problem. Uh, come on, we don't have much time. Jeb, do this thing somehow. Uh, 
Okay, well, the clawy thing is not clawing. Clearly, I must watch many more videos. Oh, maybe if I control from here, can it work? Hmm. Okay, tell you what. I'm going to pause and look up how to use this bloody claw thing so that we can retrieve this. So, hold on a sec. Well, the best hint I've got is that maybe I'm just being a little bit too rough with it. And now that the target is spinning, it's going to be a little bit tricky. But let's say we uh, engage. Okay. It's going to be hard to get it into the center of this grapple. Simply because it's spinning right now. But uh, let's, let's go a little bit slower here. On the bright side, an asteroid should be somewhat easier to grapple simply because it's bigger. Ooh, I know. I, I, I can... I can use a little trick, can't I? Aha! A little bit of time warp always stops things from spinning. Okay, uh... That was cheaty, but... We... Don't want to be at this all day, do we? Well, I guess... If that's the part it wants me to point at, maybe that's the part I should aim at. So I'm coming in very, very carefully. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, well, it's not quite clawing. But, I'll take it. Uh, so, if I turn with RCS... Ooh, it's a little bit jittery, but... I think we've got it. Okay. Uh, we're already past our apoapsis, though. So, which way do we point? We point... Uh, if we were pointing prograde, we would point above our... Let me see. Let me do a quick test burn here with our RCS. Okay. And if we point down, no. If we point up. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to use RCS to do this. Oh, I guess we could wait. To, well, it's not very good. To, our test has clearly failed in some very significant respects. Uh, let's just uh, state that right up front. It's funny, it still shows a target. What is my target now? What is my target? Is it the debris on the launch pad? How no strange. Anyway, let's skip that. That's just too confusing. Alright, uh, what was I doing? Yes, deorbiting this. I guess we can use uh, thrust. Or did that... No, no, it didn't uh, hurt anything. This isn't a very efficient way to do anything, though. Oh, okay, I'll just wait until my apple apsis and then burn retrograde. This is silly. Ooh, but our apple apsis is uh, quite far out there. I guess we got to be wasting some time on this mission. Well, this was an interesting test. I think uh, we learned quite a few things from it. We certainly learned that we can we can intercept something uh, traveling in a highly elliptical orbit. So, no real problem there. 
Takes a few burns though. Okay, and have we still got our little object? Yes, yes we do. Now let's burn retrograde and bring it into the atmosphere. Ooh, center of mass is a bit off, obviously. So hopefully with the Astro we can target the center of mass a little bit better than we could here. Every time I burn I hear the sound of the stage running out and that's probably because I've got that stage grappled like that and it's just producing that sound every time I throttle up. Let me just smash it right into the ground if I can maintain stability. No I can't, no I can't, no I can't. Uh, even with RCS on, wow. Okay, now it's going down. Alright. And let's let's bring it in a little bit closer before we detach things. I want to dump this other stage as well. I'll bring this stage in on its own, obviously, and that way we'll we won't leave any extra space junk. No point clearing up space junk and then leaving some more behind. And this time I'll have to remember to do some barometer readings in the atmosphere. Okay, so around here I think we need to release. So that guy is going to be heading down. And I guess we can now disarm this. Get Shroud back on. You know what? The parachutes might not be enough with so much mono propellant. I'm going to burn some mono propellants. I want to make sure our parachutes are going to hold us, and so I need to empty that mono propellant tank. Those mono propellant tanks. Okay. So I'm going to try for this sort of burn, and I don't care that I'm wasting my propellant here because that's the whole point. Okay, now I'm going to... we still got periapsis in the atmosphere and that's fine, that's as intended, but I'm going to decouple this portion. And yep, it's safe to do so. Now, I'm going to continue burning, but I want to see my periapsis go down. This might be a bit of a hard landing for Jeb here, if I can't dump enough of the mono propellant. There really should be a way to dump fuel. I mean, they do that. It is, it is a thing that is done in real life. See how we're doing. We might have to go around. Um, why is my altitude indicator stuck? What the heck is going on? I think I've discovered a bug, folks. Uh, yeah. What the heck? Uh, let me just, let's say we control from here. I'm gonna, okay, there's no other objects to focus on. Shows where, this is all frozen. I've never seen that before. I'd better, 
Do what? What am I gonna do? Is our orbit changing? Our orbit is changing, so it's, it thinks we're in the atmosphere. I can get a altitude reading here. We're gonna have to go around. Uh, no avoiding that. What does this? That is stock, so it's not a mod that's doing this. Wow. Uh, there might there might be a fix out already. I uh, whenever I update Kerbal Space Program, I I just download it from the website, and I don't I don't get uh, automatic updates because because I run mods and that can complicate things. If you're running mods and the mods don't uh, keep up with the updates. But yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll check for a fix of this. This is uh, such a clear bug that I'm sure that I, I know there's been some fixes in the works. So, oh, that's interesting. Orbit surface target all the same speed. Well, that is highly unlikely. So, so basically what I'm looking at is my displays here are not correct. A time has frozen as well, you'll notice and won't change. Wow, this whole GUI is totally bored. Um, so, but this one is fine. Oh darn. I think I made a mistake. I think I have just produced a new target for our grapple. Looks like we're gonna get another mission. Alright, well, whatever works. Um, let me just wait until Apple apps Let's time warp this. We need to get Jeb back home at least. Oh, it doesn't want to show me my retrograde vector. Well, it doesn't matter. I know it's here. This is very, very, very strange. Okay, we don't need to. We don't need to go retrograde more. I need to burn off my my velocity, uh, my uh, RCS somehow. And the best way to do that would be an inclination change because inclination change have have no significant or minimal significant effect on the orbit. Okay, I should be able to get rid of the rest on the way down. Okay, I think we've hit the atmosphere. Can't really tell though. So what I'm doing right now is retro burning and I don't really want to reduce my periapsis as such. Just want to burn more of this RCS. Okay, let's see how high we are. Uh, 15,000 and coming down fast, okay. I think we can release the parachutes. And we'll have SA. Oh, okay. SAS. SA. Okay, well, I think the SAS indicator isn't actually showing me anything right now. This isn't actually going on and off. Oh, barometer, barometer. Let's get some signs out of this thing. Sheesh. Where are my barometers? Oh, I attached them to the front. Oh, that's silly. Maybe I did symmetry of some kind. Okay, let's uh, keep that data. And then we'll do a barometer reading on the surface. Did, did I do symmetry? Yeah. I think, yeah, I did symmetry. That's why. Okay. Alright. Unfortunately, I don't know how fast we're going down. It looks okay. Let me just go ahead and dump the rest of the monopropellant. Uh, but I have to be careful not to start going up. Hmm. 
uh, it's just my velocity being very fast. But that could be completely wrong. 170. Uh, but it, look, it looks, when you look at our descent, it doesn't look too bad. I think 170 is orbital velocity. Okay, yes it was. Alright, so let me do another barometer reading. Okay, from the Highlands. Very nice. Okay, so Jeb did a semi-successful mission. Uh, we didn't get to the little piece of debris in time, really. And that's because I didn't really understand how to grapple it at first. So I just needed to be a little bit more cautious, as if docking. And really aim at the target. Uh, instead of Because uh, I was trying to aim at the center of the body instead of at where it thought I should be aiming at and so that probably caused a little bit of a problem too so just aim at whatever it says the target is and uh, even though that was definitely not the center of mass because the center mass of that particular piece of debris would have been closer to the rocket um, and we found that out because we had a little bit of lack of control while we were trying to do orbital maneuvers after we grappled it so lots of things learned this time let's let's recover this and for a second there, I was wondering whether the whole thing would crash given the GUI issue that we had. So that's another thing I learned. I might need to update my Kerbal Space Program. So I'll do that. Uh, if there's an update available, I'll do that before I fire it up again. So yeah, so interesting times. I think uh, we'll call it a day here. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.